Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe, and this is the Ultimaker S7. This is the latest printer to be released from the new company that resulted from the merger of Ultimaker and MakerBot, but it's pretty clear which product line this came from. This is the latest evolution in a line that has served Ultimaker quite well, going from the Ultimaker S3 to the S5, and now the S7. So all of those same basic features are here. The dual extrusion, the swappable print cores, uh, the onboard camera, network connectivity, heated bed, all of the basics that you'd expect, they're all there. Same basic capabilities such as print speed, print resolution, positioning accuracy, no fundamental differences in the capabilities. There are no evolutionary leaps in 3D printing possibilities happening here. This is just an evolution of what was already a successful design and a fine tuning to make the overall user experience even better than it was before. So let's talk about some of the changes that this does include. The first obvious change is the physical size of the machine. It's a good deal taller than the S5, and that's because what they've done is taken that optional air manager add-on and built it right into the machine. So you have that air filtration, which takes care of up to 95% of ultrafine particles using an EPA filter that's built right into the machine. And it also helps to maintain an optimal temperature within the build environment because it can vary the speed of the fan according to the needs of the material being used. So it'll actually help to give you more reliable printing, especially when you get into some of those more advanced materials that tend to warp or benefit from having a warmer build chamber. The S7 offers a single glass door as opposed to the Ultimaker S5, which had split doors. This provides better containment within the build chamber so you can maintain an optimal temperature and uh, keep the air in there, make sure that everything is going through that filter in the back there. And uh, it also has a nice magnetic closure mechanism, the hinges feel really strong, and the door moves nicely. It just feels really well built. Well, let's talk about the build plate. Up until now, all Ultimaker printers have come with a glass build plate, and with the Ultimaker S7, they have switched to a flexible PEI build plate. Now, if you've used a flexible PEI build plate in the past, then you're going to welcome this change. You already know how nice they are to work with. For most materials, you don't need to worry about any kind of adhesives. You just print right onto this plate and your first layers stick perfectly. When the print is done, you lift that build plate out, flex it, and the prints just pop right off. Couldn't be easier. They have a wonderful magnetic alignment system with a grid of magnets so that popping that plate in and making sure it goes into the right position is easy as can be. It is double-sided, so you can't always flip it over if you want to print on the other side, if, you, if one side gets worn out or anything like that. So that'll help to extend its life. I've really enjoyed working with the Flex Build Plate myself. It definitely makes the 3D printing process easier. There's always been some hassle in terms of getting your parts to stick really well to the bed, but then also being able to get them off easily. Now, I have really enjoyed using the Magigoo adhesives. I've mentioned that in other videos. I think they really improve the user experience in most situations because that Magigoo is heat activated, so your parts stick to the plate beautifully, but as soon as the bed cools, they just release. Interestingly enough, I've actually found that same property inherent in the new flex build plates so that your parts stick you can see a sample part here which I'll give you a close-up on so this part was printed as you can see without any kind of brim at all any other kind of bed adhesion it just stuck beautifully there's no warping around the edges at all this is a tough PLA print and yet not only do I not have to pry at it or try to get it off the build plate this print has been sitting here for some hours so the bed is completely cool and what you'll see is if I just lift it up it just comes right off. There's no adhesion whatsoever. It just released as the bed cools. Very similar to what my experience has been with the Magigoo adhesives. So you really won't even need to worry about anything like adhesives or any other kind of bed adhesion with most of the common materials using this flex build plate. The printhead itself has a number of important improvements. So they've introduced an inductive sensor to further improve the automated leveling capabilities so that you can really be sure that that first layer is going to be perfectly laid flat and will stick well to the build plate. If you've been 3D printing for a while, you know that nothing is more important than getting a good first layer. If you watch that first layer and everything is sticking perfectly and nothing is lifting at the edges and everything is adhering well, then you know the rest of that print is going to go well. On the other hand, if you see any imperfections or places where something is lifting or warping on that first layer, chances are that problem is going to 
become magnified throughout the print and may end up in a print failure later on. So nothing is more important than that first layer. And Ultimaker really has nailed this with the Ultimaker S7. So this new inductive sensor on the print head combined with the new bed tilt compensation mean that you have fully automatic bed leveling and a perfect first layer every time. In fact, if you were to raise this build plate and look underneath, you won't even find those three adjustment screws that you're used to from previous Ultimaker models. There is literally no way to make any adjustments on the bed. It comes pre-leveled from the factory and you never have to do anything with it. You just send your print jobs and the printer handles getting a perfect first layer for you every time. Now one of the other improvements they made with the print head is the introduction of print head flood protection. Now, even though this flexible PEI build plate gives you very reliable first layers, it's always possible for something to go wrong. And if your printed object does happen to break free from the build plate, it can start to get dragged around by the print head and that material can start to build up around the nozzle and eventually could seep into the print head and it can make quite a mess. They now have a sensor in the print head that can detect that if it starts happening and will automatically stop your print so that things don't get too out of hand. That's a really welcome change to avoid what could otherwise be a very messy and time-consuming situation to recover from. Now this printer still, of course, offers dual extrusion with the exact same swappable print cores that previous Ultimaker models have offered. So those same print cores are compatible with the Ultimaker S7. So using the AA print cores, you can use a wide variety of build materials. There are literally hundreds of materials to choose from in the marketplace. Using the BB print cores, you can use the water-soluble PVA support material, which is a very powerful option, especially for more complex objects. And with the CC print cores, you can print abrasive materials materials such as metals, nylon carbon fiber, glass fiber reinforced materials, etc. The printer comes with two AA print cores and one BB print core, so that means out of the box you can do either dual extrusion printing with those water soluble supports or you can do dual color printing using two different colors of a build material. And by adding additional print cores, you can further expand your options, maybe larger nozzles to print faster, smaller nozzles to print finer details, and uh, the CC print cores to allow you to print abrasive materials. There's a new upgraded full HD camera in the corner there, and because of the added height that's available, they were able to move that camera much higher so that instead of looking across your print almost at bed level, you're now looking down from above and getting a much more useful view of your print as it happens. You can spot any issues without having to go over to the printer. They've also upgraded the Wi-Fi antenna that's built into this machine. So it now has a much stronger Wi-Fi antenna that's capable of both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And that seems to be providing much more reliable network connectivity, at least based on my testing so far. I haven't had a single disconnection, which did happen from time to time on the other Ultimaker printers that uh, we have in the shop here. Now, the Ultimaker S7 is fully compatible with the material station that you know from the S5 Pro Bundle. That's available either as the S7 Pro Bundle or as a separate add-on accessory, so you can buy it either with the S7 printer or after the fact. That's the component that goes underneath the printer, allows you to load up to six spools of various materials, and it will automatically handle the loading and unloading of those materials. It can fail over from one spool to another if one runs out. It also helps to maintain optimal humidity of those spools that are contained within the material station. Really a nice component to have in your mix if you're doing high volume workflows where you're printing a lot of parts or long prints and really want to make sure that you don't have to worry so much about loading and unloading spools of filament. Like other Ultimaker models, this printer is very quiet when it's in operation. There would be no problem having this sitting beside you in an office or in the back of a classroom. It's not going to bother anyone when it's in operation, which is really nice. When you buy the Ultimaker S7, you are buying into the Ultimaker ecosystem, and that's important. You really aren't just getting the machine. You have to think of it in terms of the overall workflow of 3D printing and all of the different aspects that that includes. So you have the award-winning Ultimaker Cura slicing software, this is the most popular slicing software on the planet with millions of users, and they're constantly improving it with new features, and uh, you'll find it really a, a pleasure to work with. That software integrates exceptionally well with Ultimaker printers so that you can access things like automatic material detection, thanks to the NFC-enabled spool holders on this when you're using Ultimaker brand materials. Uh, you can access the camera, you can send your print jobs through the network, just has a really nice integration all the way through uh, that printing workflow.
You also have access to the world-class Ultimaker support team for any issues that do arise, and you have access to Ultimaker Professional, which includes the Ultimaker Academy, which is a great e-learning platform with all the courses you need to get started using the machine and learning how to maintain the machine over time. Uh, things like how to use the Ultimaker Cura slicing software to set up your prints the way you need to, and all kinds of other useful courses in there for you and your team to go through. You get access to the Ultimaker Digital Factory, which is a cloud-based platform for managing all of your print jobs and your projects. And from there, you can send those jobs to any of the Ultimaker printers that you have on your network. You can monitor them. You can get alerts when issues happen, things like that. So, like I said, you just need to consider that whole user experience of 3D printing all the way from start to finish. And I'd say that the Ultimaker ecosystem has a lot to offer there, and that's all part of what you're getting with the Ultimaker S7 platform. So in summary, like I said earlier, there's nothing radically new or different with the Ultimaker S7. It's really just an improvement of an already successful design. If you've had or have used an Ultimaker S5 and have enjoyed that, you're going to love the Ultimaker S7. So I hope you found this video useful. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to get alerts when we put up new videos. Feel free to comment or ask questions below or email us at info at 3duniverse.org. You can also call us at 800-689-4344. Thanks for watching.